the validity of an argument goes to the structure. If we plug things in, do true premises lead to true conclusions in this, in this form? And the answer for the Kalam cosmological argument is yes, it's valid in structure. So then the second issue is, is it sound? And soundness goes to, in a colloquial sense, are the premises true? Because true premises will lead to a true conclusion. But more accurately, as I've talked about in the past, it's whether or not these premises are accepted. Uh, no, whether an argument is valid is not dependent on the personal opinion of an individual. So if the premises are true and they are sourced with verifiable information, then the argument remains valid. So whether you accept the premises or not is irrelevant, unless you can demonstrate the premises to be false. Why am I saying the Kalam is dead? What's the end of the Kalam? Well, it should have been dead from the beginning as an argument for the existence of God. Because what is also undeniable about the Kalam is that it never mentions God. Not the word and not the concept, though some people would like to weasel that concept in. The purpose for the Kalam is just that, to conclude the universe in the beginning had a cause. Once the argument is established, the cause is then given a conceptual analysis. When you conclude that God isn't being argued for here, or that the cause and God are not the same thing, you commit a fallacy known as begging the question, because you are assuming the truth in your conclusion without supporting it. The conclusion of the Kalam is that the universe must have had a cause for its existence. Now, I'm not necessarily convinced of the soundness of the early premises, but let's grant that. Let's just say that, yep, if something begins to exist, it has a cause, and the universe began to exist, therefore the universe had a cause. What do we know about the cause of the universe, assuming that the cause exists? What do we know about it? I don't know. I don't have any way to investigate it. Oh, well, we can definitely know that the universe isn't the cause of itself. Well, I'm not convinced that we can definitely know that um, because causality is necessarily temporal and temporal causality breaks down at t equals zero, which would be the origin of the universe. But also we're sloppy with language because if the universe, if everything that is in our local presentation of the universe existed as essentially a singularity and it expanded, then what you're talking about is not the cause of the universe, but the cause of the expansion of the universe. And I don't know what would or could cause that. And I don't know that anybody else does either. And yet they will argue on behalf of a god. Even Alexander Vilenkin and Alan Guth explain that even though inflation can possibly be eternal into the future, tracing it back confirms a beginning to the universe. Also, if time, space, matter, and energy began to exist, then how could the universe cause itself to exist when it wasn't here to cause itself? Your response is incoherent and poorly thought out. Also, you're completely missing the point that the expansion itself indicates a beginning. Or maybe you're just not understanding what mainstream scientists are saying about the issue. So is this an end to the Kalam cosmological argument? No, <laughs> not by a long shot. Uh, in fact, this was actually a pretty easy video to debunk. Uh, Matt, I suggest that you actually go educate yourself on the topic before um, making such ridiculous responses, especially if you want to debate somebody like William Lane Craig. Uh, so that's it, guys. Take it easy. God bless.